going now up the steps to Linda Weir's house, which is perched on the top here with panoramic views of the town and the harbour. She exploits for, uh, for her directly observed paintings. She hails from the northwest, from Manchester, and like her predecessors, Fred Yates and Alan Lowndes, both of whom were Mancunians, and also John Anthony Park in the interwar period, she takes a great interest in the industrious life of the harbour as a working port, as a fishing, fishing port. Her work is uh, expressionistic in the sense of um, choppy painterly brushwork. Uh, there is a tonal uh, control there, so her colour isn't necessarily always potent, but nevertheless within the tonal control there's a great deal of subtle colour intonation. Uh, she uh, moved down to St Ives in 2000 and has since painted full time. And, uh, belongs to that tradition of uh, Northern Realist painting in this particular town and uh, she also uses the elevated front window of her house which offers panoramic views of the town and the bay to produce uh, directly observed landscapes looking straight through the window so it's a question of a, a natural born plan aerist working indoors in this instance. This uh, front window, which is your studio at home, when you're not painting outside or using another flat, this particular view here is your light motif, isn't it, of St. Ives. It's the commanding panoramic view and you yeah. paint it and paint it and paint it in different light and different seasons. You never grow tired of it. I get exasperated um, with painting, but it, it isn't just the landscape that I'm painting. Um, I'm interested in the colours and the paint, and in the way I'm feeling, um, and what's going on in my life, so it's like a, a sort of global life thing. It's the window, St. Ives, me, my family, what, my friends and the paint. Um, so that, that's it. You talk about painting being a metaphor for the family and for your feelings about the world at large. Mm. Um, and so the physical visual spectacle that you're using, i.e. the topography of St. Yeah. Ives, it's more than it, its topographical face value. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a vehicle or a yes. metaphor for yeah. a deeper vision or a more a broader vision. Yeah. And therefore, um, sometimes you may have domestic bric-a-brac on the window mm -hmm. as well, or a vase of flowers, or mm -hmm. the cat. Yeah. And that features as well. Mm. It, it anchors the, the feeling and for me all the memories and the, the excitement of the moment uh, are um, triggered and re, reawakened by the cat or a jug um, or, or this, the way the, the weather is and the flowers and the feeling of spring or autumn or winter gets anchored by what's out there. But more than that, St. Ives and the way it looks from here, it's like a, it's like a, you say motif or, it's like, um, it's almost like a piece of jewellery with the, uh, the church as a crown. And it takes me back to early experiences of church and in, in Manchester and the, the sort of crazy religious festivals that we had, like um, the Queen of the May when all the crowns of flowers and processions and St. Patrick's Day, very, very exciting times and community times too. 
So it's all that, sort of bringing back childhood joy and excitement into the present. And the cat is part of that, he's, he's a big part of it. And I suppose the Catholic Church's, um, you know, use of symbols and regalia and, yeah. and um, that decor, sumptuous yeah. decoration, I suppose, is something that's part of your background. You can't help it, it's just, it triggers very, very young and green, fertile feelings and imagination. And uh, the vestments um, and the flowers and the embroideries and also the wonderful pictures. You know, from being five we had beautiful religious pictures which were Murillo and uh, people like that. So it's right at a very impressionable age. You had all this art belonging to you. So I think it's the same thing really. I think it's part of that. Do you... Um feel that you've in some way come to St. Ives like many artists before you. Um, do you feel you've come down from Manchester and from Lancashire with, as part of a kind of tradition? Um, you know, uh, a very prominent Manchester art scene which yes. you were a part of and then you moved here. art before or do you in any way identify yourself as an artist with uh, the St. Ives tradition? With both. Um, they're all strongly interlinked with this feeling for landscape and I did apply to go to Falmouth College, Art College a long time ago, 20 odd years, 25 years ago um, and I couldn't actually make the transition physically um, but it was more the landscape that was drawing me and, and the feeling of uh, the, the harbours and, um, and also Patrick Heron and we were linked with Patrick Heron and the Antonio Malley, the Cornish scene when we were um, running our gallery in Manchester and also there was a wonderful exhibition um, at the Whitworth of um, Patrick Heron's paintings. Um, so I think it goes back to that really. Um, the Granada collection, I think. And I suppose with the example of Patrick Heron, who uh, you encountered through the Castlefield Gallery, the gallery you were talking about in yeah. Manchester, um, his use of colour is obviously an inspiration for you and his interest in French art and the colour yeah. element in European Expressionism and so on. Mm. And, um, but I've always thought that your colour, like Patrick Heron, you're often using pure pigment from a tube. Mm. So it's colour that's uh, potent and pure and mm. intense. You do mix colour obviously, but there is that sort of poignancy, pungency of colour in your work. But equally, there's a sort of tonal um, mm. quality there as well. Mm. So it's almost like you're using a lot of colour, and yet you're not letting colour run away with itself. Mm. The colour's trying to break free in my paintings. I'm, I'm trying to get it to do something and run free. But I won't give up the drawings. I like, I like drawing. Um, I'd like it to run free and and, um, and to be able to use more colours. Um, that, that's it really, I'd like it to break free completely and have the same um, feeling as the landscape paintings or the, the more figurative ones. Or to have the colour very, very dominant and, and active within the paintings as they are. I like to push it a bit um, to a ridiculous level if I could. And sometimes they're just about one colour trying to get free, like a yellow, or to get to become active and actualised within the painting. Uh, doesn't always work. 
This is a painting of the moment, uh, Linda, full of spring life and colour. Yes. It's um, the first one I did moving back into this studio um, for the winter or after the winter and spring coming. Um, it, it's a, a celebration of, of the, the life and colour in St. Ives and um, a celebration of, of survival and change um, because we change so much and we lose so much as we go along. This is a new new beginning, beginning of the year. And I was trying to work on the colour more and, and really make the colour active and free. What, what I find so interesting about your colour is that it's very pure and intense. Mauves, reds, vermilions, uh, mustard yellows, yeah. uh, lemons, purples, lilacs, lilacs. I mean, gorgeous range of colour. Yeah. Often straight from the tube, other times mixed. But overall, you get this um, tonal subtlety, this kind of atmospheric, you know, nat naturalistic yeah. sort of credence to the. Yeah. So it's, it's excitement in the paint itself and the beautiful colours and one of the aspects is that I want to find ways of using the colour because it's exciting in itself, the texture and, and the colour of the paint. Mm. Um, it goes back to when I was a child and uh, I had a, a children's box of watercolours with Chinese white in mm. it and I didn't know what to do with it but it was just so exciting. Mm. Um, so it's always trying to find something to do with the colour mm. um, and, and almost taking liberties with it. Um, I have painted in a much more expressionistic way before, but um, I want the colour to be working and doing more. Mm. And then um, you've got the tree there to the right with, with the... Uh, the birds. Yeah, that, I call that the happy tree because there's hardly any trees here. People cut them down because they, they want the view. But this is a, a, a surviving tree and all the birds sit in it and sing. And it's just happiness. Mm. And it's it's pink because it's bursting into life and and it's survived. And, and the same of the flowers and the seagull and this three horses in, the, in galloping along the beach and, and also the boat and the work of people everything's as it should be and working beautifully so it's very idealistic really and then if i um, let's take this one down. glad that these are dry linda it must take a long time to draw. And here we have the rainbow on the right. Yeah. And the seagull on the roof in the foreground. Yeah. But this one uh, is part of a series which reminds me of the the old miniature paintings and. Um, Book of Hours, those sort of uh, almost candy colours are very exciting. And that each roof is, is different and a little picture in itself with more marks in the colour. Yeah, and then uh, take that one down. The, uh, the paint is so uh, luscious and thick that. Um, you know, you, you think it's still wet, don't you? Here we have a um, small... Sunset in December mm. from the flat, which is uh, look, overlooking the harbour. Which is looking the other way to... The opposite, yeah. The opposite way to your home where we are now. Yeah. Um, and it's a quick sketch because 
in the winter the sun goes down very quickly and it's all very very rapid and it's just like a kaleidoscope as it crosses over the sky you've got turquoises and then as the sun goes down it sort of breaks into liquid gold and mm. it's just ridiculous and then the shocking pink when in that little tiny sketch I felt I had a, an opportunity to use shocking pink and orange and yellow and they, they even sit quite nicely mm. you know, because it's a sketch mm. and then you get like a, the afterglow of, of turquoise around it so it's a little bit of wonderful example. And it started with a very, very grey, sad day. And as time ticked by, the sunset came and um, all of these colours bursting out and the change within a few minutes, really. Mm. Everything was sunny and spectacular. Spectacular, yeah. yeah. Thank you.